Hello and welcome to the Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast with me, clinical somatic educator and founder of Total Somatics, Heidi Hadley. The Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast has been designed to help you gain a deeper understanding to how your mind and body work. You will learn about your amazing mind and body and why over time you can feel pain, recurring injuries and poor posture. Within this podcast, I will teach you why this doesn't have to be your future or the norm for you. Would you like to learn how to reduce pain, move freely and gain a new lease of life? Let's get started. Hello and welcome back. Now in today's episode, we're going to discuss the subject of triggers and templates. And the reason for this is that if you are a member in the Total Somatics membership, you'll know a lot more about this. But what we want to start to do is delve into our incredible system, our incredible SOMA. And if you are new to Total Somatics, and if you're new to Somatic Movement and Mindset, the podcast that you're currently listening to, our SOMA is our entire system, our entire being. And that is made up of our emotional, mental, physical, physical and energetic health, plus many, many more things in between. But you see, our soma is an entire sensory organism, so we are absorbing and taking things in all of the time. And when we absorb and take these things in, it starts to mould and shape us to who we are to this very day, which is what makes us so incredibly unique and amazing. Plus, if you are a regular listener to these podcasts, you'll know that we are more sensory than motor. So again, it really comes into that soma, that description of being a sensory organism. So everything that we've encountered through our life, different the belief systems that we have, the injuries, the emotional impact that's happened in our life, this again creates that sensory world within and it starts to also affect the lens that we look out into the world. And so that's why it's, we don't really want to compare ourselves to others because we are so amazing and so unique. And I'm sure if you are a regular listener to these podcasts, you will know that you have something incredibly amazing underneath your skin. You have this world that all it ever wants to do is to self-heal and make the very best of every situation for you. You see, you've got something really special and what we want to do is really nurture and take care of what we have. And really, that's why I thought this particular episode, especially as we've got towards the end of the year, is a great one for a reflection, really. You know, over the year, you and I have gone through lots of different subjects within this podcast, but I feel it's really good to come back to ourselves and keep, you know, periodically assessing how we are faring, how we're doing. And I thought today, as we're at the end of another year, what can we start to do? What can we start to do to assess our life and where we're heading into the next year? And so let's first of all consider triggers. Okay, so triggers are are incredibly powerful. They are really what either make us react or respond to a situation. And this is where we're just going to delve in a little bit further because naturally we're designed with a negativity bias so the negativity bias is really to help us to look for any potential danger or situation that we can protect ourselves so in service of survival this is what our nervous system is doing is looking for a potential danger and so that's really great in some situations but we don't want to feel like we're always looking for that negativity i mean as a side note that's why the media do incredibly well with what they call clickbait by putting these fear-mongering, very scary headlines in front of us because it is, it's an emotional trigger. What it's going to do is that negativity um, bias is going to kick in. We're going to gravitate more towards a negative, fearful headline than we would a positive, happy, good news headline. That's just the way that we're designed. However, what we want to do is start looking at what we can do to shift things. So another aspect before we move on with the negativity bias is that it's actually been really good in the past. You know, if we go back to the old days, let's say um, you're walking along um, in a forest, for instance, and then all of a sudden, you know, it might be quite windy that day, whatever's going on. 
and you can see some rustling in the trees or you might see something rustling on the floor and immediately you think it's danger. It might be like a panther or a snake or, or something like that. So instinctively, all these str the stress center in your brain will trigger off stress responses in your body. Hyperventilation, you know, heart's racing, you've got more blood to your extremities ready to fight or flee. And then in a few moments, your rational part of your brain kicks in and thinks it's just a strong gust of wind. And that branch that's going across the floor is not a snake. It, it literally is just a branch. Can you see how when we just step away briefly, instead of instantaneously reacting to something, our rational mind just takes a little bit longer than this stress response part, the stress centers. And when we start thinking more consciously, more mindfully, greater awareness, then we start to see the wood for the trees really, no pun intended there, but basically that's what we start to see. So let's just consider some triggers, you know, in service of survival, what has your nervous system heightened to? What do you feel is a trigger? So for some people, it may be an aroma. It may be some music. It may be a person, maybe a location. Maybe again, it's just a type of behavioral pattern a type of conversation that gets created. All these sorts of things can start to trigger and well up reactions and responses to us. And remember I said earlier that we are a soma, a sensory organism that's been molded and shaped to this very day. You know, the way our nervous system was yesterday, the way it will be tomorrow, the way that it will be next month is different to how it is at this very moment. Again, that's why it's so important to live in the moment because we want to nurture and take care of our nervous system throughout the day, every single day. So <clears throat> you've identified your triggers and maybe with this episode, could you maybe get a piece of paper? Because I'm going to ask you different questions here. This is a really important one for that self-reflection. When we start to bring greater awareness to what's happening subconsciously, we can start to make some conscious, deliberate, mindful changes. That's what total somatics is all about. It's total somatic awareness. So let us now think, we've, we've, we're gonna really, and you might wanna play this back. You might wanna sit for a bit, maybe pause the video and write down what your triggers may be. But let us now consider your template. Now your template is basically a story it's this creation that is in your head and it's basically come from your belief systems your upbringing the experiences that you've had in life maybe your injuries and the stories that you told yourself from these injuries or this these pains or maybe it's a chronic illness and again what's happened is is that other things have happened in and around that you see what happens is we have something that happens in our life you know, and we all go through so many different things. It could be that, you know, these, the, the pandemic, for instance, has triggered things from years ago. It could be that we have things from over the years that have just, again, continued to follow us through life. Or it could be that you think you've left that alone, that story, that event that happened. But you see, what's going on inside is, if you can imagine your incredible brain holds lots of memories, there's a filing cabinet in your head with memories. Now, when we open that filing cabinet and we lift one of the files out, we have templates. And these templates are basically stories, often from our past. Now, that's our perception of that story. That's our reality of it. Might, you know, for somebody else, it could be a different perception, but it's how it's molded and shaped her, us. So then what happens is, is that that template is stored in that filing cabinet and put away. We carry on doing our own business, you know, enjoying life, maybe moving different places, going on holiday, different social circles, all sorts of things. Then all of a sudden, a trigger kicks off. Maybe it's what's been going on in the last year and a half, maybe. Maybe it's other things that have happened. But that trigger can start to then manifest into pulling out that filing cabinet, bringing out a template of a story from maybe decades ago that we thought we dealt with. 
But somewhere around that area, the emotion that was with that trigger and with that template seemed to marry together. It could be fear, it could be anxiety, it could be uncertainty, loss of control. The stories, we've all got them, you know, it's all personal to all of us. We all have stories associated with those different emotions. And so what happens is, is that it can start to snowball. And before we know it, our behavioral patterns are changing. So it's either we're feeling really anxious, really stressed. Maybe it's that we have a shorter fuse and we kind of react at the slightest thing. You see, we think, again, think cognitively, we think that we're okay. But remember, we're more feeling, we're more sensations. And so when we start to notice what's happening and how that's reacting or how that's um, starting to manifest in behavioral patterns, that's really when we need to rein it in and think to ourselves, right, we need to sit down. What are my triggers? What's the story or the template that seems to be like a broken record? What's the feeling that's coming up? Maybe it's shame, maybe it's guilt. Maybe it's that from out of the blue, from something that's happened, you kind of had this hot air and you blurted out and you reacted in a way that was completely out of character. And then as a result of that, maybe you felt guilt or shame or what am I doing? I'm feeling like I'm losing control. You see, we are at the moment, our best case studies, there's so much going around. But again, the power lies when we identify what's happening and then make some shifts and changes so that we don't continue to live in this habit, in this subconscious cycle of behavior. Because what, imagine what's that doing to us? If we're being triggered all the time and the template's being pulled out all the time and we're reliving this story, it's exhausting for your entire system, your immune system, your adrenals, just general hormonal balance as a whole. And consider if we're stressed all the time, if we're continually living in this heightened level of alertness and fear, we're increasing levels of inflammation which we know is not a healthy way to live. So that's why what I'd like us to do is think of some actions that we can do to start to shift that behavior. And I say we because I know that here within our clinic within South Australia, as well as within the membership with members from all around the world, we've all felt this. And one of the big things I really wanna um, bring out today is that importance of connection and community and I, I've got to say the total somatics community and if you're listening I'm sure you'd agree it's pretty special we've got like-minded individuals that come together they support each other the questions that come out are incredible and then I'm able to serve and support every single member within the total somatics membership likewise here in South Australia within the clinic we've got different people that come in and, and different team members and we've all felt, again, it's so important, that connection and that community with each other. You see, if anything, the pandemic's shown up that material things are, are pretty empty, really, aren't they? They're not really going to bring you happiness long term. It's that tribal, that community, that connection. Even today, on the way here to the studio, I live near a national park, and as I drove here, there were um, mountain bikers all together going across one of the main roads to go to this national park to cycle. There were, there were a group of joggers in the national park jogging as I drove by. And that's the thing is we're tribal. We love community, we love connection. That's what's really important here. And so within Total Somatics and within the Somatic Movement and Mindset podcast and all the listeners that contact me, it's really good to hear from you all because one of the big key things that's happened is we really need each other. We need that like-mindedness. And I know here, for instance, we live here in, in Australia, but the vast majority of our family are actually in the UK. And even my sister, she's in the next state in Victoria. But because we've, been, we've had borders closed, we've not been able to see anybody. And so there's been like a roller coaster of emotions, incredibly stressful that we can't get back to see anybody. 
And I know everybody has their own story to tell. And that's why community and connection are incredibly powerful because we've all learned a new level of empathy here. And so that's why there's always a silver lining with things because what this has started to do is refine who we are as a person. Start, we start to see things that are showing up on a regular basis. Maybe it is things such as triggers, the templates, the things that we thought we'd left are still there. And so that's why as a community, I'd like us to think of what we can do for actions. And so I've written a few things down here. So I'm just going to break them down. And again, if you've got a piece of paper, you might want to write this down too. So in order to kind of really uh, take care and nurture ourselves, if we feel we're being triggered, let's consider here, identify the behavior that you want to change. That's our first step. So identify the behavior that you want to change. Just consider that for a moment. How does it make you feel when you have this response? What does your energy levels feel like? Do you feel zapped? Do you feel just you've lost your mojo? Maybe you feel guilty. Maybe you feel shame. You see, we don't want to hold on to those negative descriptions for long, but they're very good to kind of show up how we feel at that time and think, right now I want to change that behavior. Again, as somas, we exist in time. We're changing all the time. So we're not set in stone. And we know that, don't we, from the science of neuroplasticity. Our brain is constantly creating new neural connections, new, new pathways. We have neurogenesis. That's the production and creation of new brain cells. Again, we're changing all the time. We have bioplasticity, incredibly amazing bioplasticity. So bioplasticity is where our body is evolving and changing and creating new movement patterns, new shapes all the time. And because of that, again, we're not set in stone. And also epigenetics. Epigenetics is an incredible field of medicine where we've discovered that whatever your family history is, you're not, you don't have to be predisposed to that. We can change lifestyle factors. We can change our mindset. We can take greater care. The importance of self-care is really important when we're considering epigenetics. Because when we look at our food, when we look at our mindset, when we look at our movement, all of the other things involved here, we can turn certain genes off and we can switch certain genes on. And the ones we want to switch on are going to give us vitality, going to give us that healthy, youthful glow from the inside out so that we can continue to enjoy a quality of life instead of feeling that we've got this fear and this triggering and this anxiety all the time. So that's the first thing. Identify the behaviors you want to change because you can change them. It might not happen overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. But if we're consistent with our behavior, we know we can make those changes. And again, as a community, we're here, aren't we, together, like-minded individuals. Also, another question is, what situations do you get into that can cause that behavior? So what situations do you get into to cause that behavior? This is really interesting. This is where we may need to just step out of a comfort zone that we've created. Maybe it's the music that we listen to, the lyrics, Maybe it's the, the TV shows that we watch. How is that impacting on us? How do we feel when we are listening or watching certain things? Does it build us up or does it pull us down? Does it create a fear within us or does it feel like an optimism? What about what we read? What about our associations, our friendship group? What kind of conversations do you have in those friendship groups? Are they upbuilding? Are they proactive? Are they looking at creating plans and things for the future? Or are they more about enjoying the drama, being involved in drama, in gossip, in fault finding, in the negativity? Have you ever noticed how you feel at times when you may be around people that are quite negative, fault finding and critical? Do you feel that you go and your breathing starts to shift? Maybe your muscles get tight. Maybe you, your gut feels like you just can't eat any more food because it's like your, your digestive system shut down. You see, they're all cues to tell you 
that your nervous system is not feeling safe. It's not comfortable in that situation. So there's a lot of things that happen and we can just stay sat in what we think is a bit of a comfort zone. But it's really important to start looking and thinking, are those, say, conversations or friendship groups serving us well? Because at the end of the day, the way that we talk to ourselves, the way that we talk to other people, the way that we talk with, say, our associates, our friends about other people, is a huge reflection on levels of our self-worth, how we feel internally. Because that's one of the things, is when you hear somebody talking about somebody else, for instance, that tells you a lot, especially if it's very critical, tells you a lot about their subconscious. Because if they're talking about somebody that they don't really know that well, they think they do, but they don't. If they think they know them well and they're talking like that, imagine what they're thinking and talking and saying to themselves. You see, this is why it's so important to come back to ourselves all the time. Notice our self-talk. Notice our thoughts and our belief systems. Are they highly critical? Can we start, start to remove that judgmental feeling? Because that again creates an unsafe feeling within your nervous system. And we know that whatever's going on in your nervous system has a ripple effect elsewhere. So that's just a few considerations there. It could be material, as I say, what we read, what we listen to, what we watch. It could be our conversations. It could be our friendship groups. You see, what we want to start to do is look at ways that we can take care of ourselves. And this is a really important way. Maybe it's starting to encourage more of a proactive, gently moving conversations into more of a positive, looking towards the future type of conversation, rather than dwelling on drama or on the past. Because people regurgitate things. And as we know, when people keep regurgitating history, it always gets skewed from the actual events to what it becomes over the years, every time it gets repeated, it becomes more embellished. And again, it's an unhealthy mindset to live in. So also when we look at that, what triggers, uh, the other question I was gonna say is, what triggers you to behave in that way? So what triggers you to behave in that way? Is it from that company that you have? Is it from listening to certain music? Is it from being kind of consumed maybe with headlines within the media? What is it that's happening? And how does it make you feel? That's the next question. How does that make you feel when you're triggered? Because again, when you feel those feelings, remember I said it could be in a group that you feel that you're taking these deep breaths all the time, holding your breath, tensing your shoulders, furrowing your forehead, grinding or clenching your jaw, finding that at the end of an evening or an end of an event, you feel more deflated, more exhausted than you probably were at the start of the day. You see, however you feel is a huge, huge barometer for us to start to listen and take positive, proactive steps to a better internal world. And when we know that our nervous system and the rest of our internal world is ticking nicely, creating that state of balance and calm from within, then we can take on so much more. We create a greater resilience when we're dealing with day-to-day -day activities and issues. And so the final question I'd like to ask you here is, what can you do to change and feel the opposite sensation? So what can you do to feel and sense that opposite, sen you know, the sensations that you get? If we can turn things around, what can you do? Would it be to either, as I said before, Stop watching those sorts of things. I mean, do you know what I love doing personally? I love listening to podcasts, but I love listening to audio books. And I, I listen to them on the way to work, on the way home. If I'm setting up and doing things here in the clinic, I'll just put my phone on and listen to the audio book. You see, I love listening to inspiring things, hearing people's biographies, different stories that happen, because you can learn so much from people. When we start consuming ourselves with more positive, interesting, proactive material, we move away from the drama of what's going on with the media, in the world, the clickbait, all that sort of thing. And I'd like you to ask yourself as well, as we go into a new year, just look back at how you've been this year and ask yourself, how can you grow? How can you develop as a person? 
how can you show up even more for yourself? And when we show up for ourselves and take care of ourselves, well, you know that that means that we can take care of people so much more. Again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, when we're on a plane, what's the first thing that they ask you to do when, the plane's, when we're in danger with the plane? The oxygen mask comes down. You put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then you take care of everybody else. That's exactly the same here. We take care of our figurative oxygen mask, our somatic health and well-being. And when we do that first and foremost for ourselves, it's not a selfish behavior. That sometimes is a belief system that people feel. It's not a selfish behavior. It's actually very, very nurturing and very caring because we, are, we have so much more to give and take care with other people, but also have our own self-care routine that we monitor. And so that's really where I'd like to bring something towards you. So over the next few weeks, while you're off on your holidays, maybe you could consider, and I'm gonna put it in the show notes here. I created about, I think it was about three years ago or so, it's called the Total Somatics Free Challenge. Now don't be put off by the word challenge. At the time I thought, oh, I'll use the word challenge, but it's not a challenge to kind of think it's something to stand up against. It was, it's really just about an experience really. So within the Total Somatics Free Challenge, or we'd say it's experience really now, there's little, there's little mini modules and they're not time consuming at all. So you've got like mindset, movement, mindfulness, and then you've got the wonderful Dr. Sarah Wilson, who's a naturopathic doctor based in Canada. And Sarah and I have done a lot over the years together and you'll see a little podcast that we do together. And that's a little sneak peek of what's actually going on within the membership. So you'll see a little bit of what's going on in there. But maybe just over the next couple of weeks or so, maybe watching one or maybe two that week, and just letting that di digest it, just mull it over, consider it, start to look at life and events and your belief systems and your thoughts and your internal dialogue. Look through a different lens. As we go into a new year, look at how you can grow and develop as a person. Maybe considering the triggers that you've had, the templates that you've had, how can we just start to change that slightly to create a more kinder, more um, calmer internal world? And again, connection and community, it's so incredibly important. So keep in touch with me because I love hearing from everyone, from the Total Somatics members to the listeners of Somatic Movement and Mindset. I get so many, you know, so many calls and so many emails and it's absolutely wonderful to hear from you all. So please keep them flooding in. And remember, whenever you contact me, I create a podcast episode to deliver and serve to you. And that's something also I want to share with you is that in the new year, we're, I'm going to start releasing new digital products for you. And so this is where it's going to be really exciting because with everything that's gone on, I've been sitting and listening to the comments from the members, listening to the listeners of Somatic Movement and Mindset, seeing here within my clinical practice, what's happening. So not just here in South Australia or Australia as a whole, but internationally, because Total Somatics is an international membership. Internationally, doesn't matter where you live, everyone's feeling those same emotions, those same responses. So I'm gonna be producing products for you in the new year, digital products. So if you wanna know what's happening, keep in touch with me, please. I'm not going anywhere, so stay in touch with me because we're gonna be going through lots of things that are gonna help with stabilizing our nervous system, creating a real calm from within, taking care of our breathing, looking at our gut health, looking at something called social engagement. When we wear face masks a lot, it's gonna to start to affect our social engagement, it starts to change how we feel emotionally in our nervous system. So what we're gonna be doing is the situation that we're living with now, let's learn how we can adapt and change. Remember all those amazing properties of neuroplasticity, bioplasticity, neurogenesis, and epigenetics means that we're constantly evolving as a soma. So we will just move and pivot with the times and we'll be doing that together as a community. So as I said, all the details below. So below I'm gonna put the wait list. So if you're interested in for the next time I open the doors to the Total Somatics membership, you're more than welcome to, to join the wait list and I'll contact you as soon as that happens, as soon as we open the doors again. 
but also I'll put lots of little stars, a lot of little, little um, like asterisks next to the Total Somatics free challenge. So you can just listen to that over the holidays. And also, if you are new to the podcasts here, or you have not kind of caught up with some of them, do spend time, if you've got a bit of quiet time, put the headphones in, find a quiet spot, and just listen through to a lot of these podcast episodes. So there's somewhere I'll just be talking about our incredible SOMA, different aspects of it, our emotional, our mindset, mindfulness, all those sorts of things. But also, I've got some incredible guests that have been on to this podcast that have contributed towards the Total Somatics membership. So please, if you've got that chance, do make time because it's a way again of how we're going to evolve and change as a person. Also, I will make sure in the show notes, there's a few more goodies for you. So there'll be a few extra links there. So check those out so that you'll find that all in the show notes with this podcast. And if you're listening to this or you're watching this through the blog, uh, the totalsomatics.com blogs that go out every week, middle of the week, then I'll make sure that all the links are in there too. So you've got the resources available. So thank you so, so much for joining me this year. I've absolutely loved it. It's so nice hearing from you. And you and I have just grown together, haven't we, over this last year or year and a half, however long we've been together. So thank you so much. I send all my love and best wishes to you all. Have a lovely rest over these holidays and I will see you in 2022. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and also forward this on to somebody you know will benefit. To learn more about pain relief plus how to improve your health and well-being, go to totalsomatics.com. Until next time, Take care.